There ain't a creek she can't ford, a gully she can't jump, or a hill she can't climb. I got me $25 that says I can do it. Does anybody want to bet me? Who's that soldier boy out there strutting around like a banded rooster? It's old man Red Lynn's boy, Doolittle. Do you remember reading our script, Coal Miner's Daughter, what you thought about it? Yes, I do remember it. I don't remember any, any, any flaws. Uh, uh, I don't remember having any complaints. This one was a big deal for me because it was universal. It was a large budget. It was a subject matter that was very close to my heart. You know, I'd going to get to go to Tennessee and Kentucky where I'd feel at home. Building a portrait of Lenny was a lot of fun. I admired him and the things that he was able to accomplish with his life, his dedication to the children and to his wife. What did he think of you when you showed up saying, I'm going to be you in the movie? Oh, I don't think he was very pleased. We were at a, a fancy hotel in Nashville. I was sent out to Hurricane Mills to meet Mooney. My friend Levon Helm and another musician were going to go. And as we left the hotel, Levon had an idea that we might make a brief stop at a recording studio. And we were in a limousine that had been sent. In this limousine was my, my dog, Travis. A, I remember uh, Travis. Yeah. Uh, a, a, a nice hound. Um, and, and the driver, who was a little bit goofy, uh, left us at the recording studio. We went in, and all the driver could remember was that he had been instructed to go to Hurricane Mills. So off he went. <laughs> leaving us there in this in the studio and and uh pulled up to to uh mooney's place where he was waiting with some of his cowboys to see just who this uh, hollywood character was that was going to play him in the movie and up pulls a limousine so and i'm sure that you know M M mooney was looking at that sideways and when they opened the door out jumped travis <laughs> this was uh <laughs> this uh <laughs> And Mooney was expecting to see uh, the movie version of himself, and, and it was a, <laughs> a hound. Uh, so he, um, uh, we showed up about an hour later, and, and um, Mooney had left. He was gone. He was um, up in the mountains uh, behind his ranch house uh, on his bulldozer. And we could tell, well, they gave us instructions on how to get to him, but we could see where he was because if you looked at the horizon, you could see the tops of these tall trees crashing down <laughs> one after the other, you figured that's where Mooney was. And so how was it with you and him after the initial shock and then the initial Oh, apology? we became good friends. He gave me a shoebox full of family pictures, snapshots of the children, the early days, that were just gold yeah. for me. It was just invaluable. And that's just a very important thing for an actor to have and yeah. to, to refer to. And, and so, you know, it was easy to go to the costume department and say, this is what I look like. Yeah. And, and it's easy to look at the picture and say, that's what I feel like. He taught me how to drive an old bulldozer, right. one that is steered by its brakes. You put it in gear, you bring the RPMs up, and off it goes. And if you want to turn, you just brake one of the tracks with a handbrake. That's exactly the technique that we yeah. use uh, in the, uh, in the bulldozer shot uh, coming down the hill, right. a shot that I'm very proud of. Oh, this is the Grand Ole Opry. You want chocolate or glaze? The Grand Ole Opry. Did you know that part of the world when, when we started about it? Did you know the music? Or? Of course, yeah, I did. You know, uh, I was country when country wasn't cool, <laughs> as the song says. I've been listening to Loretta Lynn and others on the radios in West Texas all of my life. So-called hillbilly culture wasn't foreign or strange to me in any way at all. We wanted to shoot it all on location. Mm -hmm. This whole kind of Hollywood entourage moved in. That's right, and and, uh, and, and at first we're resented. All right, y'all, we got one more pie left. It, it's a chocolate pie here, it belonged to Loretta Webb. We did have to work on occasion to um, gain the trust of people who lived in the mountains of Kentucky, eastern Tennessee, because they had been treated so badly by the media in the past. These mountains are relatively unimpacted by the homogenization of American society. Their ethnicity remains. They're proud of it. 
They struggle to maintain it and keep it alive. It's a matter of personal pride for individuals and pride of the community also. Talk about family values or work ethic mm -hmm. uh, or other so-called values, but the most valuable value is identity. So, I mean, one of the reasons it was successful is the love story, is, is the way you and Sissy played together. I mean, what was the chemistry there? I, I think, Sissy, uh, we, uh, we were of a single mind about the importance of making these characters real. There was a feeling of having a mission. I recognized that in her and uh, appreciated it very much. I look upon her as family, yeah. like a sister. Well, we've done two other films together. Yeah, you directed her. Yeah, she's a really good actress. Happy anniversary, darling. I never forget just the way you two could stage things yourself. I mean, there's, Bernard has a picture of a scene when you're drunk and you've bought mm -hmm. the guitar for the first time. And you and she just did that. I mean, I just sat there and watched it, this whole idea of putting the guitar on the end of the bed and then you playing with your feet and all that. That wasn't in the script. That's mm -hmm. nothing I said to you guys. You just did it. At the beginning of the day, you do what seems to be right, what seems to be creative, what seems to serve a camera well and characters and their relationships well and what seems to be original. We'll be brave enough to make a mistake because we know Michael is there. Right. If we uh, don't meet all of his needs, he'll, t he'll change it. And if we do something wrong, he'll change it. Uh, and he won't be mad at us. Where have you been? My lesson always was, if you're going to put a geography on the screen, don't just shoot the landscape, shoot the people. Oh, uh, yeah. And so we used a lot of local people, but one, one of the key pieces of castle which you were responsible for was Levon. Do you remember that story? Oh, yeah. I mean, I was, I, I was surprised when you asked me who could play her dad. I thought, well... Levon's voice is already a beautiful, masterful instrument. His life is made of creativity. And he's skinny. And he's got that sandy hair. He could easily be Loretta's father. There was a bit of typecasting that came along after that, and we struggled against it, as one always does. I mean, it is weird. I mean, I mean you know, when I showed it to my friends who didn't necessarily know, you know, I said, this is Tommy, Tommy graduated cum laude at Harvard, and there he is with his big beer belly, you know. That was kind of the, uh, the attitude. I mean, that's, uh, look at that guy, this, that Mooney Lynn character. I mean, that's not acting. That's the way that guy is. I thought horny meant cutting up neck and silly. Come off that dumb hillbilly act. You know, that's the thing ready, you know, that ain't no act. Thank you, do. Are there are any other moments in the film? That oh, I, I love them all. Yeah. I love it when I fell in the hog trough. At, at their house in the, in the hog pen. I, 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 I fought that up and I begged you to let me do it. Oh, there ain't nothing I can't do, girl, once I set my mind to it. I have a lot of little memories, I mean, that are as important as the big ones. I love the light on top of the hill where Mooney was going to build his house. Yeah. And, and he had the final argument with the, uh, in the movie there with Loretta. Yeah. It's just beautiful light that day. Yeah. I think we were blessed, weren't we? I yes. Mean, you know, sometimes things go your way and they, they went our way. Was it what you'd expected it would be? Or what, and what I never thought it would be as uh, beloved yeah. over the years yeah. as it has become. The relief of seeing your work live and have its own life. Yeah. There's great satisfaction in that, long after the money is gone. But it was my great luck to have you in the movie. Well, you know. Thank you. It was, a, it was a formative experience for me. Um, I, I learned a lot of things. I haven't forgotten one. Hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that I had the chance. <laughs>